AWS Toolkit is a plugin available for JetBrains IntelliJ products that allow you to create, view, and update AWS resources directly in your editor. So in this video, I wanted to do a brief demonstration of how to use AWS Toolkit by interacting with AWS resources in our account and creating and deploying a Lambda function using Python. So let's move over into my IDE and check it out. When you're in your IDE, the first thing you need to do is install the AWS Toolkit by going to File in the top left and then going to Settings. From here, make sure you have the plugins menu selected and make sure that you've selected marketplace at the top over here. In the search box, type in AWS and one of the first options you should see is the AWS toolkit like we see here. If you don't have it installed, you can go ahead and click the install button. It should be green like you see in this example over here. Once it's installed, you may need to restart your IntelliJ IDE in order for it to take effect. You should see a menu bar in the bottom left that says AWS Explorer. This is the primary way that you interact with the AWS Toolkit through IntelliJ. In the AWS Explorer, we have a bunch of different services that we can interact with. These are primarily services that I already have resources that are created, which is why they're showing up as default. So for example, if I go to DynamoDB here, I can see the tables that I have provisioned on this AWS account. So if we look at this and we double click one of these, for example, the customer orders table here, you can see a preview of the data that exists in my table. So you can see how this may be useful. We no longer need to have a separate tab open or even have to go into the AWS console anymore. We can see a lot of this different data directly from within our IntelliJ IDE. You can see there's a whole bunch of different settings or different resources that I have here on the left-hand side. Uh, so let's just take a look at a couple of them here. So you can see that I have CloudWatch logs as well. This is useful if you want to take a look at any log streams that are coming in to your application. So for example, if we click on this one here and I can actually right click to say view log streams and in the bottom, we should see a list of all the different log streams that's related to this group. I can click on one of them and I can even see the different log entries that are associated with that log stream. So you can see the start of the request, the metadata and the end request. Now, if I just minimize that to go back to the main menu here, let's take a look at some of the other examples. So for S3, we're able to see all the different buckets and files that we have in our AWS account. So you can see if I go to this one and I just right click and go to view bucket, I can see what's in this bucket and I can go ahead and drag this onto my desktop if I wanted to, if I wanted to directly download it. Moving on, we can see for SQS, a very common service that a lot of us use. This is an SQS queue that I have on my account. I can right click on this and go to view messages and we can pull those messages directly from within IntelliJ by clicking the view messages button in the bottom right here. So you can see I have two messages in this queue, one that contains this message here and another one over here. If we want to, I can right click on this queue again and I can purge the queue to remove the messages from the queue. I can configure a Lambda trigger all directly within my IDE and also my SNS topic. Also, we can adjust the queue parameters. So there's a lot of different settings that you can play with here to configure your infrastructure from within your IDE. Now, the last one that I wanna touch on very quickly is Lambda. So from here, these are all the different Lambda functions that I have on my AWS account. So you can even remotely execute these Lambdas from your IDE. So you can right click on this and run remote. And before we can do that, there's a bunch of input that we need to provide. So for example, we need to give a input um, to the function itself. And there's some different test templates that you can pass in here. So if it's an API gateway proxy, uh, and these are all some of the most common ones. I'm not gonna go through this here. I'm gonna show you this uh, or how to create a Lambda function using AWS Toolkit in a second here. So let's just cancel out of that. But these are some of the cool things that you can do with this plugin. So what I wanna do now is show you a demonstration of how you can create, edit, and deploy an AWS Lambda function all within your IntelliJ IDE using the AWS Toolkit. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the top left where it says File, go to New, and go to New Project. Now, assuming you have the AWS Toolkit installed, you should see a launch type here that says AWS. And when you click on it, you should see AWS Serverless Application. So in order to take full advantage of your project and this configuration, you're gonna need a couple things installed. You're gonna need the AWS CLI, you're gonna need AWS SAM, and you're going to need Docker installed and running because our application is going to run within a Docker container when we run this function locally. So now you can go to the bottom right where it says next. And now we need to configure some project details. Uh, so I'm going to go and just set a different directory here that's a little bit more convenient for me. So uh, within temp, 
And I'm just going to add a subdirectory here. So we're going to say demo. Uh, so this is going to be called the project demo. And then we're going to set it for Python 3.8. And you can set the architecture. Now also make sure to select AWS SAM Hello World. This is gonna give us a template, just a very basic starter one. You can see there's some other options here as well if you're integrating your Lambda function with things like a DynamoDB event or an EventBridge event. Uh, these give you the corresponding templates for you to work with right out of the gate. But I'm gonna select Hello World here and also make sure you're using the correct SDK for whatever runtime that you are gonna be using because that does matter. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click on finish in the bottom. Just select the confirmation screen here. Now the template is going to be generated using AWS Toolkit. Uh, you can see there's a couple warnings in the bottom right here. These don't really matter. Uh, this one may, if you have a credential set on your AWS profile um, that isn't valid anymore, you can go ahead and click on AWS or edit uh, AWS credential details there if you want, but it is not necessary. Okay, so now if we take a look at the project structure over here, if you look at it within the hello world uh, side, you can see within the app.py, this is our main entry point to the project. So this is our main entry point for the Lambda function itself. You can delete all this. This is just some documentation to get you started, but you can see the body of this function is a very simple one. It's just a status code 200 and we are returning the body here with hello world. Now what you can do that's pretty neat about using um, AWS Toolkit with Lambda is that you can run this function locally and even debug it locally. So if you add a breakpoint right here and then you click on the Lambda button and go to debug, uh, we're gonna be able to launch this function directly on our machine within a Docker container and then debug it as it runs in real time. So you need to set up some things here. So make sure to set up the architecture. If you have any environment variables, you need to do that here. And then what's also neat is that you can specify the input either as a custom text field that you put in here, maybe a JSON object that's unique to your function, or you can click on one of the many event templates like API Gateway AWS Proxy, and that will work as well. Now, the last thing that we need to do is that we need to select our AWS connection. So we need to select a valid profile that has permission to AWS. So I have a couple profiles already created. Mine that works uh, for this demonstration will be this one. And the region that I'm comfortable in is US East 1. And I'm just going to go back here because I do see an error or a warning here for some reason. Um, not sure why it's saying that. Everything looks correct. Uh, okay. Configuration still incorrect. Looks like it wasn't saving this correctly for some reason. Okay, there we go. Uh, so go ahead and click apply and then debug and we should launch a Docker container like you can see right here. And hopefully if this worked correctly, we should see a breakpoint right here before we return out of our function. So you can see um, we did hit that breakpoint and you can now debug this function locally without having to deploy it into the cloud, without having to do print line statements or anything like that and just save you a lot of frustration as you're developing your applications. So you can experiment with this a bit. I'm just gonna stop it really quick and you can also run it as well if you wanna try that out. So we're just gonna say stop and rerun and we should see the output here really quickly uh, with regards to what we passed in using that event template in a similar kind of way. And you can see here, this is what we are outputting, which is that status code 200 and the message, hello world. Uh, so that's how you would develop this locally. You can also write your tests in here if you want to run your tests. And this gives you kind of a good starting point in order to do that. Now, what if you are done with developing your function and you want to deploy that up into the cloud? How would you do that? Well, you can also do that within this toolkit. So you can go down uh, where it says the template.yaml file. So this uses AWS CloudFormation and it's kind of like a templating language that we can use to generate different AWS infrastructure. I have a whole video on AWS CloudFormation that I'll put in the bottom uh, or the description if you're interested in learning more. But essentially, we can define our Lambda function and we're also, as you may see here, defining a event or a trigger, which is an API that's going to be of a get type and in the path is slash hello. So we're building a REST API uh, that's going to be hittable through this slash hello path. And then there's some other details here. You can read up more about, um, you know, building AWS serverless functions with um, CloudFormation, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Now, once you're happy with this, you can go to that template.yaml file in the bottom here, right click on this and click on deploy serverless application like we see down here. So we're going to click on this 
and we need to configure our AWS connection. Yeah, so make sure before you do that, you click on this AWS Explorer again, and you need to set your profile instead of default. I'm gonna set mine to AWS Simplify, which has the right permission set. So let's try that again. Right click on template.yaml, go to deploy serverless application, and now it's gonna ask you to create a CloudFormation stack to deploy this application. So you can call this whatever you want. Um, Demo Lambda in my case is fine. And you can deploy this into an S3 bucket. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new S3 bucket here and let's just call this, I don't know, something completely random because um, these names need to be globally unique. And we're gonna create that. And we are gonna build this function inside a container as well to keep everything nice and clean. So now we're gonna click on deploy and this is gonna create a CloudFormation stack within AWS and it should contain all of our dependencies that we included in this project. So everything is gonna be wrapped up and then it's gonna put all that data into S3 and then link that S3 zip to our Lambda function. And so in a moment or so, you should see a new view. You can see kind of that we're creating a change set in CloudFormation, but we should see a live view of the CloudFormation resources being created as per our CloudFormation uh, template.yaml file here. So you can see now that we have a bunch of things streaming down our screen. This is typical of what you would see in AWS CloudFormation. So our stack is currently being created. You can see our demo Lambda uh, is being created. Our IAM role that's necessary for this function is being created. And this will auto refresh. So as soon as it's done, it should show up. Uh, so I'm just gonna give this a moment or so until it completes. And then we can take a look at this function within the AWS console to confirm it's all there. And it's still creating some extra stuff here. So now it looks like it's creating that REST API. We can see that it's still busy doing things based on the uh, turning symbol over here. So let's just wait until this is all ready to go. So we can see create complete now. So let's go into my browser to check this out in the AWS console. All right, so here I am in the console. I'm gonna go to the Lambda section and we are just gonna scroll down here. You can see my demo Lambda. This was my hello world function. And you can see I just created this 39 seconds ago. So this is indeed the one that we just created through IntelliJ. If we click on this and I just zoom out a little bit to make this a little bit more readable, you can see this is the exact code that we just uploaded or we just edited within our IDE. And we also see all of the additional dependencies that we included uh, that were part of that project as well. So the request library, URL lib3, and a couple other ones as well. I hope this video was useful in showcasing how this AWS toolkit can help you rapidly build and deploy on AWS, especially with AWS Lambda. If you like this video, check out this other one on the right on CloudFormation, and I'll see you next time.